All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about something that I find to be pretty interesting, and it's partly something I've heard through other knife tubers, but also something that I think is worth addressing, and that is, what is Emerson hiding? Today, we are going to be taking a look at an old Emerson versus a new Emerson. And the reason I wanted to do this is because I get a lot of, like I said, a lot of people in the knife community that say that Emerson knives originally were bad um, or their quality control wasn't as good and, you know, overall the product wasn't as finished or refined. And so we have a 2013, 2013 model Emerson here. As you can see, this is a Horseman or Mini CQC8 and like I said, made in 2013. So I would consider this to be an older school Emerson. And um, yeah, so we're gonna take a look inside this guy. We're gonna break it down. And to compare it, we have a newer school Emerson. I wanna say that this is probably a 2019 to 2020 year um, <clears throat> Emerson, so definitely newer. It is one of the newer builds. As you can see, it omits the birth year that was so common on the original Emersons. So this is what I would consider a new school or newer Emerson. So what all has changed between these two? Are there any lurking suspicious things in the new ones or have they really stepped up their quality? only one way to tell. So let's jump right into both of these Emersons. So first off, the one cool thing about Emersons is that today, um, unlike many knife companies, I don't know if they necessarily recommend that you break down your Emersons, but they don't make it hard to do. And so with pretty much every Emerson out there, um, you can break them down using a flathead screwdriver or you know basic things like that for your pivot and then you have a phillips screwdriver or phillips for the rest of your different um, body screws so what i like to do with these guys is usually when i break them down and newsflash i have broken down both of my older emersons i have not actually broken down any of my newer ones but I have broken all my older ones down, primarily to clean them just because, you know, knives get dirty. So this isn't necessarily me saying that I know for sure what's on the inside of the, the new versus old, but I do know what's on the old. So let me break this guy down and we can talk about it. All right, so. I am going to flash forward to breaking down the new Emerson and this guy will be in pieces the next time you see it. All right, guys, so now it's probably looking a little bit more chaotic. I finally have torn everything down and I decided to add my 2009 Emerson to this because initially I was like, there's supposed to be some differences in the 2013 I didn't initially see. So I pulled my older one down just to double check, but there honestly between all of these years, we have the 2013 to the left, the 2009 in the center, and then probably 2019, 2020 over here to the right. And if just before we dig into this, like honestly i really don't see any noticeable differences but let's start off with the blades now of course these uh first two uh have been previously owned and previously sharpened so outside of the wear and tear from like normal use on the blade you really don't see a whole lot of differences the quality here looks just fine um just a well used well loved emerson here so nothing really to complain about there you know you can see a little bit greasy um as you'd expect because I do keep KPL on my knives. Now um, we go over to the lock side. So of course these are titanium uh, liner lock knives for those who don't know. And as you can see, looks pretty generic, pretty clean. Like, so this is a 2013 and you know, I think a lot of people insinuated that these knives looked like rough and you know, just absolutely terrible on the inside. But honestly, this all looks pretty clean to me. And so I really, don't know what to say in that regard. Um, I don't have any issues with what I'm seeing there. <clears throat> now, something I will say. Now, something I will say is upon first inspection, you'll notice this is the inside of the titanium uh, liner that sits on the you know opposite side of the lock side. So maybe you'd say it's the show side. And initially this is the side that faces inward. So this is where you know your steel of the knife would be contacting. And it looks pretty darn clean. You know, the holes are countersunk, you know, there's really no issues here until you flip over to this side. Now this side 
is the side that's going to be contacting the inside of the G10 handle. So this is where this basically sits, right? But if you do look at this, you can see some incredibly rough machining, especially around here. Um, there are just lots and lots of leftover bits of titanium, just really showing that this was um, not so well manufactured. Definitely looks a little bit more rough around the edges, you know, no countersinking here, just very rough, abrupt edges. But at the same time too, I will say, even though some people might look at that and be like, man, that was just, you know, poorly machined and, you know, yada, 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 you know, to be fair, I mean, I'm not the largest, like I'm not the most enthusiastic that especially this area looks like it was just chewed up. Um, but to be fair, it does sit on the inside or the side facing the G10 handle. So it really doesn't come into contact with anything. And so therefore, it's not really a huge problem in my opinion. Like it's not going to impact the function of the knife in a severe manner. So moving over to the 2009 version. Um, 2009 is, oh, I should also mention the washers. These washers, I am not entirely sure what these washers are made out of. They are flexible and I feel like I wanna say they are some form of polymer, plastic, or polycarbonate. Um, they initially kind of almost felt like graphite, but they uh, definitely are some kind of plastic product because they definitely feel like they scratch like plastic. And like I said, these things are physically bendable. And when you bend them, like you could probably break this if you wanted, but when you bend it, you know, lightly, it's not holding its shape. So <clears throat> typically speaking with something like a phosphorus bronze washer. If you bend it like bronze, it will hold that bend. So these are definitely a plastic um, washer. So these are a definite form of plastic washer. Now that being said, and I think where it will become most interesting is looking at the 2009 version of this. You know, a lot of people will say, you know, like, oh, boo, hiss, plastic Teflon washers, you know, they're so horrible and stuff like that. And granted, once again, I mean, is it nice to see phosphorus bronze washers? Sure. You know, is it nice to see caged ceramic ball bearing? You know, uh, yes, it is. But at the same time too, like, I, what I kind of love about Emerson's is how they fly in the face, especially nowadays, they like absolutely fly in the face of modernity or, you know, the modern best practices. And to be honest, this, these things work just about as good as, you know, caged ball bearings or phosphorus bronze washers. So you kind of find that these things just fly in the face of, you know, all the standard practices of today's age. Now, like I said, this is the 2009 version. Um, <clears throat> this is the 2009 version. As you can see with the blade, it obviously looks worn. This blade has been opened thousands of times. It is once again, 2009 blade. So we're looking at, you know, the years 2023, at least when I'm making this video. So, you know, we're talking close to like, what is that? 12 years or something, uh, maybe 13. So it's, it's an older blade, seen a lot of use, seen a lot of abuse. Um, so, you know, it is what it is, but as far as it goes, still completely functional. Um, one thing I will note, and one thing that I do think is of all highest irony, is the liner. Now, for those who don't know, and for those who are uninitiated, this liner looks like it's seen better days, and that's because honestly, it has. But this is still a titanium liner, and I think that this is a really good um, case study to go over with the fact of showing how when you have titanium rubbing up against hardened steel, titanium as hard as it is will or is the softer of the two metals. So you can see with this one that it definitely is showing visible signs of wear on the lock bar. So it is important and like I said, kind of funny, like Teflon washers, you know, hold up great for 12 years, 13 years, right? 
but then you look at this and you see that the titanium, you know, the premium material here is actually showing the greatest sign of wear of just about anything. So really interesting and an important point for my knife, fellow knife lovers to note. If you don't already know, um, titanium is softer than hardened steel. So if you have titanium frame locks, liner locks, anything where the titanium directly interfaces with the steel of the blade, you will see, once again, through the course of 10, 15 years, a noticeable degradation in your lock bar interface with hardened steel. Now, once again, we come over to, so that was the lock bar side that you just saw. We are coming back over to the, you know, non-locking or kind of show scale, if you will. And you'll see that the side that interfaces directly with the knife, the pivot here is nice and shiny, even feels very polished from all the movement and action. Now you flip it over. This is the side of this titanium frame or uh, titanium liner that would be sitting against the G10. And you can see once again, very rough, very poorly machined around here. I don't necessarily want to say poorly machined, but just very rough. Like there's lots of rough edges in here. Um, hopefully the camera picks that up and this is just overall not very smooth. Like you take a look at this side and the titanium looks nice and smooth to the touch. You look at this side and the titanium looks and feels rough to the touch. So interesting point. Once again, you know, take it for what it's worth. That side really doesn't have any effect on the function and performance of the knife. All right, now let's take a look at a practically brand new Emerson, both in age and also in use. This is really not used at all. This is an Emerson Patriot. I don't believe that they make this model anymore, but once again, this is a, you know, um, late 2000 or late 2010s to early 2020s knife. So you can see good steel. Um, let's take a quick look at that lock bar, um, just so you guys can see, and you guys can definitely tell that I'm not lying, you know, pretty much no wear on that lock face at all or that um, interface where the lock bar would rest. Then once again, going over it, looking at this side of the lock bar, pretty much no deformation because once again, this is pretty much brand new. So, you know, this thing really has probably gone into the lock position maybe a hundred times as opposed to maybe, you know, 10,000 times for the commander. So pretty much brand new, you know, um, lock face there, definitely no issues there, no deformation. And uh, something I will say that is interesting in my opinion and looking at it now a little bit more than I previously did, you can see on this newer Emerson that the lock face is very chattery. And I don't know if that's done on purpose. Um, it almost looks like it is. But at the same time, too, I'm not sure if it actually is. So interesting point, because um, with these both of these older Emersons, they've simply been used to the point where even on this 2013 version, you can see, you know, just a noticeable amount of deformation on the lock face. Um, so, you know, when you see that much deformation or that much wear, like obviously you're not going to see any um, <clears throat> signs of chatter marks but on this newer emerson you definitely see some chatter marks there and once again to be fair and in my opinion you know i haven't noticed any performance like ironically for this looking as sloppy as it does i really haven't noticed you know like uh, any lock stick on it or any problems like such so once again we have the um, kind of show side uh, titanium scale here, titanium liner, I should say. And, you know, once again, this is the side that sits directly against the knife when it's opening and closing. This is the reverse side. And once again, you can see, and maybe pretty noticeably on this one, the amount of just chatter and unevenness in this line right here. So you can definitely see that there, um, very uneven. And honestly, I think in my opinion, it just goes to show that Truth be told, um, you know, you guys can see here an old Emerson, a 2009, a 2013, and like I said, roughly 2019 to 2020 Emerson here. And realistically, they all look just about the same. Like I can't guarantee, you know, what the lock face looked like brand new on this Minicom because the lock face is so well worn in. And same with this, uh, you know, 2013 uh, Horseman. But at the same time, too, I would have reason to believe, especially looking at some of the other similarities between these knives, to say that genuinely, I don't really think that the quality, 
the build, the manufacturing, um, or QC has changed in them. And I think, as a matter of fact, if you pulled any Emerson down, new or old, you would probably see just about the same. Now, does this mean that the products are bad? Because this is the biggest thing, I think the reason why most people hate Emerson is these QC problems that I just showed you. And I say QC problems with the lightest possible grain of salt, because like I said, functionally speaking, all of these knives that you see here, they open, they close, I can flick them out, I can you know, um, you know, open them with pretty good ease. And so realistically speaking, I don't see anything on these knives. Like, you know, once again, this lock bar isn't the prettiest, um, but at the same time too, it's not dysfunctional. Like honestly, like my Strider SNG has more lock stick than this, you know, um, knife here with its chattery uh, lock face. So when I sit down and see like these knives and stuff, I can't really say definitively that these knives are poorly built, um, but I do think that when it comes to Emerson, it kind of aligns up with their kind of idea of a knife. For Emerson, like Ernie Emerson, the maker of Emerson knives, he really has a very pragmatic view of blades being tools, and therefore these are just you know, um, tools to that, to the company and to him. And so for them, they aren't here trying to make a functional tool look beautiful. They're really just trying to make a functional tool across the board. And so I think that's something that you definitely see really digging them, taking them apart and digging into them. But I'm definitely glad that I did this because I was curious myself because they like said I hear this talk among other especially fellow knife tubers that you know old Emerson bad new Emerson good only buy new Emerson and as you guys can see with this unless they're talking about like truthfully ancient Emersons like maybe the ones from the 90s or early 2000s so this is still a 2009 so this would still be considered an old Emerson uh, for sure you can see that realistically speaking, um, build quality wise, there is no difference between any of these knives. Now, yes, this Emerson is built a little bit different. Like you can see it has a noticeable backspacer, whereas new Emersons, even like the new Emerson Commander, you know, uses this standoff kind of uh, system that, you know, you see on this Patriot. So they've changed their manufacturing process a little bit, but the core ethos of how they make these knives, I mean, even the line liners, um, and I forgot to show the liners here, but even the liners on the brand new Emerson here are still the same plastic um, styled uh, washer that, like I said, you can bend it, it flexes, but it doesn't stay, you know, in that flexed position. And once again, it feels very plasticky to me. It doesn't necessarily feel like a Teflon washer per se to me. Um, and one thing that I do find interesting uh, about the newer Emerson that I did notice also on my Commander, as you guys can probably notice here, is there's two different washer sizes. I would imagine one washer is for the lock bar side and the other is for the non-lock bar side. And that is something that I would say is stolen directly out of the playbook of Chris Reeve because Chris Reeve has notably done that with starting with the Sabenza way back when, but they've done that for decades, um, doing a two-sized um, washer, where you can see with the rest of these knives, they all use a single-sized washer. Now, the size of it, of course, varies on the knife, like the Minicom has smaller washers than the Horseman, and obviously the Patriot has bigger um, washers, but... <clears throat> or has a bigger washer, but it also has a smaller washer as well. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this deep dive into Emerson knives and uh, looking at the build quality and maybe the lack there of build quality. Uh, I'm gonna let you guys decide, you know, really what you think. But at the end of the day, I still really like Emerson's. And like I said, as far as a functional knife goes, all of these open just the way they're intended to, all of them close the way that they're intended to. None of them have lock stick. This one does have a bit of lock bar travel, and I will likely at some point need this lock bar or this lock side replaced because of this lock bar interface. But that is also totally understandable and predictable because when you use titanium versus hardened steel, you're going to get that wear regardless to what kind of knife, what kind of manufacturer. I think the only thing is you might see that here in an Emerson as a slightly accelerated thing because your lock face is 
you know, a thin piece of titanium. Whereas on say a Chris Reeve knives Sabenza, you're using a frame lock, which is a thick piece of titanium. So it takes a lot more time to wear through a thicker piece of titanium than a thinner piece of titanium. However, both will wear down eventually. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was interesting and entertaining. As always, God bless.